Okay. Ah. Hello, everyone entering the room. We're just going to give ourselves one more minute for more to join, and then we will get started. Good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Julia Wong. I'm the Marketing Director for Wild Women Expeditions, and we welcome you to our webinar. Uh, today, we are talking about the 2024 Worldwide Adventure Calendar. And before we start, I'd like to acknowledge that as a Canadian company, we are thankful for the opportunity to create, collaborate, play, and work on these lands, which are known today as Canada. From coast to coast to coast, we acknowledge the ancestral and unceded territories of all the Inuit and Métis and First Nations people that call this land home. So a little bit of housekeeping before we begin. Um, we have a Q&A chat box for this webinar. When you have questions, please feel free to enter your questions into the chat box. If your question is pertaining to something that we are currently chatting about, I will have one of our uh, panelists, speak to your question at that time. If not, we will try to answer all of the questions at the end during our Q&A session. If we do run out of time, please feel free to still add in your question to the chat box um, as they are the questions are recorded and we will respond to you via email or phone call tomorrow or the rest of the week um, as soon as we can get to it. Um, and as this video is being recorded, if you do have to jump off, we will be um, sending through the recording to everyone who's registered. Um, so if you do need to leave, that's okay as well, and you can catch up with us after. So tonight, our panelists, we have Megan Bailey, who's a Director of Sales and Client Care. We have Franny Bergschneider, our Global Programs and Operations Manager. We have Jen Bradbury, our Business Development and Partnerships. And Julianne Davies, our Adventure Specialist. Hey, everybody. <laughs> So I will hand it over to Megan. Well, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, we just wanted to do a quick intro to Wild Women Expeditions. I know many of you know us well and have traveled around the world with us, uh, but some of you are brand new. So a huge welcome to everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, it's probably obvious, but it's always worth repeating and it's always worth celebrating that we are proud to be a woman-founded, woman-owned, and women-led business for over 30 years. We run trips on all seven continents and we are focused on creating amazing experiences in wild spaces shared with this incredible community of women. That's all of you. Uh, we have women joining us as solo travelers, coming as friends, as partners, and the real magic happens when everyone comes together. And we've seen groups evolve into lifelong friendships, embarking on journey after journey together. And one of the most gratifying parts of our jobs is hearing and hear seeing and hearing these stories of women conquering challenges, um, whether it's scaling mountains, uh, putting themselves into a new and uncomfortable situation, plunging into Arctic waters. Um, and then the best part is sharing all of these stories and triumphs uh, and challenges with, with you, our community. Um, so that's why you would want to, why we travel with wild women. Um, Julie, with the next slide we have, um, we do offer trips all over the globe, like I said. Um, so this is what you'll see when you come to our website and what you can see in our calendar. Um, so we go, all over the place, but we design our trips really consciously. So we're not just taking groups to see the, the tourist hotspots. We're not planning trips to all-inclusive resorts. We are looking to create true adventures. Uh, we want to push ourselves be beyond or just to the edge of our comfort zone, um, making sure that we're always doing that in a, in a comfortable, caring, and supportive way. Uh, our team are always selecting destinations uh, where we have the opportunity to be in wild spaces and to challenge ourselves and our fellow travelers. Uh, but we're also selecting those destinations where we can empower the local women and the local communities that we work with. 
So a lot of time and effort goes into finding the right partners and the right guides that we'll be working with on the ground, um, as well as selecting the right accommodation and the right activities that we'll be taking part of. So we hear time and again that that hard work is well worth it um, because we know that we have some of the best trips, some of the best guides uh, around the world. Um, so we are so excited to share some of that with you today. We are going to talk about some of our favorite trips for 2024, as well as some of our new trips that we're so excited to share. Um, and then we will also touch on some of our incredible small ship polar expeditions. So we have a lot to get through today. So we'll try, we'll try to keep on track, but we have so much amazing stuff to talk about. But well, Julia will keep us on track. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello, I'm Franny, and I get the pleasure and privilege of talking to you about Egypt. Um, we have um, our ultimate Egypt voyage or um, trip. And as you can see here, we, well, actually, I want to take it back a few slides when we were at the pyramids. So I don't, I don't want to forget about those because I know how iconic those can be and deep rooted, um, deep rooted that desire to see those pyramids it's is so we definitely do go to the pyramids and also the sphinx um on day one of the trip um and after that we make our way we have to take a domestic flight down to luxor um and so once you see the pyramids and then once you make your way to luxor you really start to understand that the magic of egypt is in luxor it's in these temples called Karnak Temple and Luxor Temple, um, and as well as the mortuary temples in the Valley of the King, Kings and Queens. Um, so we spend we spend a lot of time um, in Karnak and Luxor Temple, just wandering around, getting lost thousands of years back in time. Um, the guide really helps to bring these stories to life. Uh, she is an Egyptologist and she really captures um, and layers different stories on top of each other. So you learn about these different uh, gods and goddesses that the ancient, ancient Egyptians were worshiping. Um, the picture on the bottom right is uh, in the Valley of the Kings and Queens. We spend an afternoon exploring that area. It's a it's a totally different um, otherworldly place. It's the mortuary tombs. Uh, so we're going down below the ground to where the uh, mummies would have been buried. Um, and you can really see how you really see how the color was used in these carvings. So you can you can go down and you have the really, really well-preserved uh, carvings and pictures. And again, you're learning a lot of the stories that are captured on the walls through your Egyptologist. And um, the picture on the bottom right is, is the mortuary temple of Hatshepsut. So uh, one of the only female pharaohs, uh, she ruled, I think it was about 1500 BC, um, she adopted a mas masculine traits and garb and she was a prolific builder. So she actually oversaw the building of the Karnak temple and her ast astounding mortuary temple. She's one of the only people and women to actually build their mortuary temple above the ground uh, into, that, into that mountainous uh, rock there. Um, yeah, and then the, the, this photo is a photo from the Nile, uh, where you live for four nights on this Dahabaya boat, um, and it's almost like being out of time, so when you're on this boat, you feel like you could be Agatha Christie, um, or Alexander the Great or even Cleopatra or Nefertiti herself it just it takes you completely out of time this iconic um vista of the Nile um and what I love about this time on the on the boat is you really get time to reflect about the uh, previous uh, temple time and so you can start to process some of that and it, it's just amazing how how much you 
how much you connect to yourself on this trip. So it's, it's like doing these things that you dream about when you're a little girl, kind of those, the stories of the Pharaoh and the, the Sphinx, and that comes to life on this trip for you. Um, and we also on this Dahabaya boat get to stop at different communities along the way. Julia, do you want to show the next slide? We stop at different communities along the way and we visit uh, different women uh, doing different things in each community. The communities are so small that you can't even find the name of the community or the name of the little town on the map. Um, but we visit a few of these little these these little communities, these little towns, and families welcome us into their homes. We get to drink tea with local families. Um, we eat and learn how to bake our bood bread, which is the bread that this lovely woman is baking on the top right there. Um, and we really get welcomed, welcomed into the communities and the families there and see how they live. Uh, it's such an intimate experience. And Rani, we have one quick question while we're on the topic of Egypt. Yeah. Um, can you please um, answer what safety precautions are there on the Egypt trip? That's a great question. So um, Egypt is actually the country where I felt safest and most taken care of, of any of my, of any of my travels that I've ever had in my whole life. Right. When you land in the airport, they pick you up. Um, right when you land, there's someone there as your personal handler, basically, and they don't stop until they bring, they bring you on your back to your departure flight. So you're picked up, you have a personal handler, handler with you at all times, handling your luggage. Uh, when you're in, when you're in the van going, uh, like traveling to different different spots wherever you're going there is a like a a armed guard vehicle that's trailing you you don't notice them but they are there and then as well as when you are um in any large tourist attractions so for example if when you go to the the pyramids um there's an armed guard that is distanced always with you so they're always with you but they keep a little bit of distance from you to, to, to make sure that you're having your experience. Um, but again, I just want to iterate, reiterate that this is a trip where I have never felt so taken care of and safe. Uh, you're, you, you really become kind of like a group of goslings to your mother goose, who's the guide. And, um, then there's these layers of safety surrounding you, uh, st starting right away when you land at the airport. Oh, and that's why the silence, because can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I uh, have no idea what happened, but I can't see anything. I can just see a couple of you, but I can't see any of the photos. So I'm not oh, too no. sure. Yeah. So I'm not too sure what's happening. But anyways, it's a, um, it's a photo of a tent. In no, I can, I can okay. see, I can just see that now. And it's about this big on my screen. I have no idea. I've been trying to get it back. But anyways. I'm going to talk to you about our awesome Baja kayaking trip. Um, this has always been one of our most popular trips and usually fills up just at the drop of a hat. So um, we're actually lucky that we have spots left this year. And we do, we run this trip in January, February, and March. And we've got, I think there's three trips left, the late February and the two March that have spots still. So this is a fabulous trip to uh, get a nice winter getaway from these cold temperatures. And the beauty of this trip is it's not really that far away from where most of us live um, in terms of flights and logistics and time zone. It's a fairly easy trip in that sense. So um, yeah, it's just uh, an awesome trip. It starts with, um, as you can see here in the photo, we start off with a really fun night of camping beside some hot springs in a canyon. Um, we, we spend the full day exploring, this is sort of in between, um, where we get picked up, where you fly into and La Paz. So you spend a full day exploring, um, in, in this canyon, as you can see, there's some really fun water slides and just some great swimming and some gentle, but adventurous bouldering around and, 
um, just a really, really fun and safe day. Um, you can jump off whatever you want to, but you don't have to. Um, but yeah, so then that's a super fun day. Then we head up to La Paz and we spend a night in the hotel up there. Um, and we kind of get ourselves oriented for our kayaking that night. Then we head off to do our beach camping. And we have uh, three nights of beach camping in total for this trip. Three nights, uh, is that right? Three nights of hotels. Yeah, and four nights of camping. Sorry, one in the canyon and three on the beaches up on Espiritu Santo Island. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, crystal clear, gorgeous, relatively warm waters. Um, just uh, having a blast, as you can see in those photos. We it's fairly beginner oriented, but it doesn't mean it's not fun. If you've had you know quite a bit of kayaking experience, it's definitely worthwhile, um, even for a seasoned kayaker. But it's it's uh, conducive to somebody without a ton of kayaking experience as well. So we spend one day at the beach, we get ready, we head out, we paddle for about four to five, maybe three to five hours. Um, and we ha uh, actually, sorry, I skipped a day um, and I might've because I couldn't see the photos, but we have a day where we head out and we do some snorkeling with the sea lions, um, which is just a really, really fun day. We head out to the national park. Um, we do that day before our first beach night. Um, and then we paddle over to the beaches and we spend, two full days um, hiking and camping on the beaches on the island. Um, and then on our third day, we we head off again, um, do a little bit of kayaking, and then we hop in a boat that takes us back to La Paz. And then we spend a night in La Paz, and then we head over to the western side of the Baja, where we watch, uh, we go out on a three-hour tour, um, and we watch, this is the time of year that the gray whales are doing their migration down from the Arctic and they come down and this is an area where it's a really large bay, um, and it's their calving grounds. And, um, it's, that could sound like it might be a little bit disruptive, but it's not, it's a huge area. We go out in our little bays and, uh, the, the gray whales, um, often will, they're inquisitive as well. And there's, um, we just kind of cut our engine and we float and they often come quite close as you can see. Um, I think this one, I don't know if it's in, I don't think we have a photo, um, with the little baby, but this one had a calf with it and the calf was kind of coming up to the boat and they were peeking out at us. And it was a really, really magical experience. Um, so that's a full day on the western side and then you head back over to La Paz for your farewell dinner um, and last night in a lovely hotel and a good hot shower and then we um, the next morning you're you're taken back down to um, to the airport in Los Cabos so or uh, yeah Los Cabos um, so yeah just a, a excellent getaway not super committing in terms of um, you know, visas and large flights. So I think that's why this one fills up um, quite quickly every year. Um, and this is also one of the reasons that we've added another one in the fall. It's called the Loretto, and we'll talk about that later, but um, just a very popular trip. So yeah, if you're thinking of you know, wanting to get away from this cold, um, feel free to give me a call. We definitely have some spots left, but uh, for February and March, but yeah. That's about it. Sorry, I really can't see much. I'm looking at a little tiny, tiny image. And that's, yeah, that's that trip. Awesome. Thanks, Julia. Um, hey, guys, my name is Jen. Not to be confused with Jennifer or Jenny. <laughs> there is three of us on the team. Um, and I work on the program team. So I do a lot of partner relationships. I deal with our partners on the our local partners on the ground. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about uh, this one is about Thailand. Um, I was on this trip last November, so I was very lucky to be able to experience. So I'm just going to share a little bit of um, my experience with you. Some of the pictures that you see here, um, you know, we are at a homestay. So this one you arrive in Chiang Mai and it's a very, very quick uh, transfer to the air, to your hotel. Sorry, it's only about 20, 25 minutes and you'll stay there for two nights. Um, you start the day off at your first day you arrive, you'll, you know, get there, we'll have our welcome dinner. The second day you're going to, we're going to start you off right, uh, right properly and bring you to a spa with a, for a Thai massage. Uh, ladies, you definitely don't want to miss this. Uh, you start the day off with a good steam and then you're, 
you're spoiled at a very, very lovely spa. They can accommodate any pressure that you may request. So um, some people might think that time, time massages could be very, very painful, but they will be able to accommodate. Um, it was probably the best massage I ever had in my life. Then after this, what you see is some pictures here that are similar. Uh, we'll learn some local cu uh, culture. We'll visit a woman's local home at a typical Lanner house. And there we'll learn some traditional ways of Thai lifestyle. So we'll wander her grounds. We'll learn and we'll witness how she grows all of her own fruits and vegetables. You'll learn how she grows Thai bird chilies, curry paste, Thai, uh, thai basil, or Vietnamese coriander. Then we'll watch a cooking demonstration and then followed by we get to cook our own lunch with some of the vegetables that we picked from our own garden. And then after or while we're having our lunch, we'll, uh, we get to watch a Thai Northern traditional dance performance. And for those of you inclined and have uh, have some dancing feet and want to sing, you're more than encouraged to, uh, to join in and dance and sing along. This is the first uh, homestay we'll, we'll visit and then we'll... Uh, Later on in the itinerary, we'll actually go to a homestay where we will be um, visiting a hill tribe community and we're actually going to stay overnight with them. So we're going to really learn to live like a local. So that's, that's all your homestays uh, there. And then we'll also uh, we'll we'll have a few other along the way. Next, I'm going to talk about is this is a lot of people's bucket list trip and a lot of people are a lot of reasons why people do want to go to northern Thailand. We do visit a sanctuary called Chil, uh, Chang Chil. That picture on the top left is actually my group. I'm in the middle there bending over. Um, you can see how close we got to the elephants. So we arrive around 9.30 in the morning and then we have our own private tour led by a local female that works there. She will introduce us the way of life, uh, the way of, of the life that the elephants live in their local habitat. Um, there's four re uh, resident elephants. Two of them are actually mother and daughter. So it's and they they kind of they stay close to each other all the time. So it's it's really nice to see them. The other um, uh, two of them total, they, they are quite a bit older. They're around 30. Well, they're about 35, 36 when I was there. So probably about 37 years old now. Um, and then we'll set off to our private tour, which is only about a 10, 15 minute walk until we get to where we're going to start seeing elephants. And that's when all the magic happens. Um, you'll get to witness and the, you'll see uh, workers that are there and they'll, they'll actually demonstrate how they speak to elephants. Like they actually communicate with elephants and they both understand each, each other. That's how they've been, uh, you know, they've been working with each other for so long. Um, the owner of Chang Chil, his family has been working with elephants for several, several generations. Um, it is an eight, eight, eight acre home for them. So there's a lot of room to for them to move around. Um, they're definitely not in captivity at all. Um, tons and tons of space for them to to live there. Um, we, I, it's very important to note to announce that we we are very proud to support a hundred percent touch free experience. Um, that's for the safety of the animals, of course, and to go along with the wild animals protection ethical uh, tourism model. So we uh, we we do offer a hundred percent. But like you said, you can see in these photos, you are you can get up to you know very very close, like some sometimes only a couple feet away. Um, once we're we're done seeing them living, we'll go for a couple of little hikes while we're up on the mountain. Then we're going to come back down and um, we're going to, it's feeding time for the, for the elephants. So uh, what we get to do is we get to actually mix their food for them and then watch them eat. They're really literally only like a couple feet away. If you are lucky, you might even get them to see the play and there's a river right beside it. You might even get them to see like you might even get to see one of them go in the river and play or one of them and go wash off if they have mud on them. It's a really, really cool experience. And then after lunch, we will learn how to help them make their medicine and supplements. So and then so we will actually sit and make their medicine and then watch them uh, watch them take it. So it's it's definitely what an experience. It was probably one of my favorite days of my whole life. And it's uh, it was it was absolutely amazing. Yeah, I think all these three pictures here are mine. So you can actually see how close we are. Um, all right. And then we're going to move on to. Um, I'm just going to go over a couple of different activities that we do throughout the trip. This is not necessarily all the same day. Um, but the first one that you see on the bottom left is the Sticky Waterfalls. Um, this was one of the coolest things I ever done. I was actually a little bit um, intimidated and scared when uh, I told I was got told that we're climbing a waterfall in bare feet. I was like, oh, my gosh, am I going to slip? I'm going to fall. But it's called Sticky Waterfalls for a reason. Um, your feet actually do kind of stick to the rocks and it is actually super easy. Um, there is a rope there if you want to um, 
if you want to help and pull yourself up, sometimes I use it, sometimes I didn't, depending on where we were. But it takes about probably 10, 15 minutes to get up to the top. But it was literally like probably one of the coolest things that um that that I've done. It was, uh, yeah, you can see the excitement on the women's face there um, in the picture. And then um, we go to, this was another one of my favorite afternoons, um, to a reserve. So you'll see. Um, Basically, we take a traditional Thai long boat. It's about a 25 minute ride um, out. And we're actually staying in a floating or not. St we're not staying there, but we we spend the afternoon at a local um, a floating community. Basically, it's a restaurant. Um, there's a hotel, a floating hotel there. Um, you know, we go in, we have lunch and then we have an afternoon of just uh, hanging out and playing around. You can swim, you can kayak, you can um, there's a trampoline there. There's a basketball net that you can play. Um, you know, in the water, um, or you can just sell, sit and chill out on the on the patio and, you know, and take it all in. It's a very, very, very beautiful surroundings. And then um, you will get to see quite a few different waterfalls while you're there as well. You can see on the top group, that's actually Kira, um, our, our client care manager. Um, that's her group. She's in that photo. She was also there last year as well. So, um, there is there is some hiking on this trip so once you're doing uh you're hiking there's a lot of opportunity to be able to stop in them you're going to come across a waterfall you can stop perhaps you have a swim um take some photos wash your feet wash your hands do whatever you want to do but uh yeah you will be able to get to see um some waterfalls along the way as well the last thing i'm going to talk about for thailand is the bamboo rafting so you can see at the top right hand it's uh it was really really kind of a, a dream come true you're you spend about an hour going down a river um, you're not doing the paddling. Someone's doing the paddling for you. That you we have uh, you have somebody standing at the at the front, and they're they're um, they're paddling you in the right direction and making sure we don't hit any you know hit any uh, rocks or the side of the side of the river. But um, it's it's pretty exciting. It's very extremely extremely safe. Um, sometimes the the rabbits could you're you're really like going up and down up and down, and it's just it's it's quite the adventure. It's exciting. So it lasts about an hour depending on the the uh the depth of the water that that day and then we finish off that after that after our activity with uh riverside lunch at a beautiful restaurant so uh just yeah that's a little snippet of thailand if you have any questions please uh don't hesitate to reach out to us we're we're always happy to help you it's definitely one of our favorite itineraries Sorry, I was on mute there. I get to talk about Morocco. It was so exciting. Uh, so this is our ultimate Morocco trip, and it is truly a taste of everything good that Morocco has to offer. Um, we are starting out with uh, some of the cities that we visit. So this trip starts in Casablanca and ends in Marrakesh. And along the way, we're going to stop in Fez and in Chefchaouen and in a few uh, other towns and villages along the way. Um, in the bottom left hand corner there, you can see Chef Shawan, which is the blue city. And this used to be an optional excursion, but we had so many women wanting to join. So now it's part of the trip and it truly is a, a beautiful city to wander and get lost in. Um, each of these cities has something as a really unique energy and uh, different history. And we get to explore all the different medinas and markets, as well as all the, the mosques and the museums as well. So a lot of these old towns, it's easy to get lost in the winding roads, but it's also easy to, to find yourself again there. Um, we also, Julia, you want to go to the next one? We also get to take in the mountains on this trip. So I think when you think about Morocco mountains or Rocky Mountains is not the first thing you think of but the high atlas mountains are stunning um i grew up in the rocky mountains in this area i just felt really familiar with wandering up these beautiful blue skies and snow-capped mountains in the distance uh it's really beautiful we stay in a gorgeous riad in inlil uh, we get to learn about the local communities uh, that live in this really remote part of the country as well so we're getting the highlights here from deserts oases mountain cities this one this trip really really takes it all in uh, the Sahara Desert is probably what a lot of people think about when they do think about Morocco, and it is 
definitely all that is cracked up to be. Uh, the Sahara is unbelievable. We get an opportunity to to wander up the dunes. You can walk up barefoot and really feel the feel the earth under your feet. Uh, watch the sunrise and the sunset over the huge dunes. We ride camels to really experience the local way of traveling in the region. Um, and then sitting out under the stars is just, uh, uh, it's indescribable. Just a blanket of stars overhead, pitch dark, you can't see any light coming from anywhere. And it's just the Milky Way stretching out above you is uh, absolutely not to be missed. Um, the best part of the best part of Morocco, the best part of all of our trips is meeting the women, the women that we're traveling with, the women that we're going there to visit and to see. So, um, and on this trip, we definitely get an experience to meet the local women. Um, our local guides are incredible. They know people in pretty much every town that we visit and everywhere we go, we're getting invited into people's homes, invited in for tea. Um, you know, we don't necessarily know exactly when that's going to happen. It's an authentic experience that a local community will invite us in and our guide will translate for us as we get to really connect and hear about their experiences, what their life is like, share what our life is like, and, and really have that authentic experience with, with local communities. Um, on our Morocco trips, we also have a, a henna experience. So here's a local woman giving us uh, some henna as a little souvenir to take home with us. Um, and we also, one of the experiences that we do in Morocco is visit the, uh, we have a cooking class at Amal, which is a nonprofit organization that supports um, disadvantaged women to empower them and work towards financial independence. Um, so they're learning some, some skills that are needed to re-enter or enter the workforce. And we get to chat with some of these women and also support an amazing project. Um, hi, I'm Franny and I will be talking to you again about the Inca Trail Trek. Um, and you can see these three lovely women, they belong to a community in Peru, um, near Cusco in the Sacred Valley. And, uh, it's actually a Quechua community. So Quechua, the Quechua people are the, ind um, indigenous Peruvian people. Um, the original, um, the original people there for, um, like Spanish colonization. Um, but it's really amazing to go to the community where these women live. You're welcomed into, into their home. They cook you actually a lunch. So you get to sit down and have um, a meal with them. And after the meal, they start to talk to you about what they, what they do there. They belong to this community called Awamaki, and it's it's actually a, a women's fiber community program. So there is someone that oversees the uh, the logistics and coordination um, and the organizing. Organizing, but um, these women from this community uh, are basically making these crafts, and then the and then you can go watch them and see what they not want. You can go observe. Um, how and what they're doing and then you actually get to do a little uh, weaving of your own so here is the demonstration like the yarn demonstration you can see how they have the raw wool and it they'll teach you how they spin it into spun wool they'll teach you how they dye it um and they'll do a demo a weaving demonstration and then you get to pair up with a local woman and do a little weaving of your own and make a little bracelet afterwards there's a whole spread. Every woman from the community who's uh, done been doing her weaving, they bring it all together and you get to go shopping. And it's stuff that you can't necessarily find in the marketplace. Um, and just you get to buy it right from the artist herself. So you'll meet the artist and you can have a little conversation with her and learn where it comes from. Uh, and I loved doing this right away because you really feel connected to the people and the place um, before you start your hike. Um, 
And the next part of the trip is the Inca Trail Trek. And it's it's broken up into four days. So we're on the trail for four days. On the fourth day, we get to Machu Picchu. And then on we spend time exploring Machu Picchu later. But um, for that four days, it's it's um, it's broken up into those four days. On day one, it's a little bit of a warm up. So you're kind of, you're on undulating hills, you're getting to know your group, you're still acclimatizing to jet lag. And also, um, what is it called when you're at elevation? Elevation Altitude. sickness. You're climbing to, you're acclimatizing to the elevation. <laughs> um, so you'll have snacks in your bag. You can constantly be eating those cocoa candies and drinking cocoa tea, um, but just a really great, introduct introductory day to get settled uh you are camping it's like the it's the most amazing product you have porters that are following you and carrying the majority of the gear you arrive at your campsite and it's all set up there's a dining tent it's it's the most immaculate food you would ever you could ever imagine for being where you are and having what you have um it's just amazing. They set up a a little um, little tent for the toilet, so everything is taken care of. Day two is a is a difficult day. It's 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 um, almost completely uphill. You get you hike uphill to a, a pass called Dead Woman's Pass, which is about forty two hundred meters, or if you think in feet, it's about fourteen thousand feet. Um, that's the elevation. And this is the day, day two is the day that's a doozy. It's so hard. And it's the day where you, it's like a camp when you have to go through all these initiatives and games um, that are that are kind of really challenging and hard, but it's, it's so that you kind of coalesce as a group and you learn the most about yourself on these really tough days. So I love that day for that. Also, I would rather be climbing forever uphill than downhill. Um, but everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. What I love about this day too, is that you really feel like you've earned day three and day three is one of my favorite days of all time. You're exploring, you're on the, you're on the ancient original path, um, that the Quechua people would have made as they, as they were building this path from Cusco to Machu Picchu. And you're in this cloud forest, which is this completely unique ecosystem with little tiny orchids growing from trees and moss on every area of the tree. And you're you're basically above the clouds. It's just this match and in the clouds, it's super amazing. Um, and this is the day where you've kind of um, on day two, you've, you've gotten rid of all of your mental chatter and you can just really relax into day three, um, and start to reflect and really be in the present. They say that if you are on the Inca trail track, it's cause Pachamama called you there herself. Uh, it is a pilgrimage and, um, you, you are, learning about what you want to let go of in your life at home and who you want to take for and what you want to take forward with you on your life when you return. Um, because who you are when you go on this trip is not necessarily who you, who you are when you're leaving. Um, so day three is definitely my favorite. You are at a campsite that is just the most beautiful place. You're above the clouds and on day four, you start your hike down, down into Machu Picchu. So you pretty much are hiking down for many, many hours. And it's such a reward to get to Machu Picchu, uh, one of the spiritual centers of the world. Uh, it's a UNESCO heritage site. And um, it was built in the 15th century. It's an ancient Inca city. They call it the lost Inca city. Um, it was completely overgrown by jungle and they found it. I forget what year they found it in, but pretty recently. And they started, um, they got funds to carve out 
to basically take the jungle off the Machu Picchu. And what I love about it is you can be in this complex, in this old ancient city, and you can look, you can look past what they've uncovered and you can, you can see how much jungle is still there. And you can just, your, your um, sense of wonder is just ignited because you think, oh gosh, here's what is uncovered. But think about all the stuff that's uncovered, that's yet to be discovered or yet to be um, explored, which is, is super exciting. Um, and it's such a reward to get to this place after hiking for four days on the Inca Trail. Um, and my big takeaway from this trip was that it's one step at a time, one foot in front of the other. Um, so I try, I try, I've tried to take that into everything I do to be in the present and be focused on what I'm doing in the moment, one foot in front of the other. Um, and I also get to talk to you about our ultimate Jordan trip, which is very near and dear to my heart. It's such a special place. I'm wearing my Jordan Jordanian scarf for you on this fine evening. Um, and the trip starts at a this place called Biet City, which li the little literal translation uh, from Arabic is a grandmother's house. And this woman, this this woman who runs this school, this cooking school called Bet City, this is literally her grandmother's house, which is super unique. Uh, it's it's an amazing cooking class. You learn how to make all different kinds of Jordanian cuisine from makluba, which literally translate to upside down. Um, and you'll make some Jordanian desserts. It's just such a great way to start a trip because you get to uh, get to know some local Jordanian women who are teaching you about cuisine and culture and you also get to bond as a group doing this uh this activity and then of course what better way to end the activity than sharing in this meal that you've you've cooked together so we love that um and also one interesting thing around this time on the trip as well is you're in the during the days you're going to visit these women's cooperative which are um unique programs that uh, Jordan, Jordan, um, different, either um, they're funded from either the Jordanian government or um, different people fund them. But they're so amazing because women go to these cooperatives every day. And if you have children, you bring your children, they have a daycare there as well. So they'll take care of your kids. You can cultivate and learn your craft um, so if you're wanting to be a potter, you can really just focus and hone your pottery skills, weaving skills, um, what else, paper making, and then the co-op is open to us and we get to go and meet the women and also we can purchase any of their goods. So it, it, um, it's a great way to give back and keep this meaningful cooperative going. And then we'll, we move on to Petra, which is such a special, special place. It's um, it's from 7,000 BC from um, the Nebatean Empire, basically. And it was built in this specific spot because it was in the right spot on the incense trade route. Um, so they were... It was on the right, the right place at the right time for transporting basically frankincense and myrrh um, thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. It's just insane. What I love about visiting Petra is you wake up early and you go to Petra and you walk through this rock formation called the Seek. And it's this super narrow, super narrow crevice in this in these huge rocks on either side of you these red rocks and you're walking in this column and you can't see anything you're just walking and walking and walking in this seek and then 
at the end of the seek, you're rewarded with your first little, little tiny sliver of the treasury, uh, which is this building just here on the left. And what a reward it is. Uh, you'll explore all day in the comp in Petra. There's so much to see, not just the treasury, but it was an ancient civilization, an ancient city um, for a very nomadic people. And you'll see different buildings. Your guide will be able to share with you the history. Um, and you'll really get to connect with the spirit of the place. There's just this energy that is, um, we'll say it's good vibrations there. It's very a very special place. Um, what else do I want to tell you about Petra? It's amazing. Um, you'll also where I talk about why you'll also hike do the back door to um Petra when a, a hike on which where you'll hike up to the monastery so you'll also have an opportunity to see uh the monastery as well which is a great hike and you'll get to be in after Petra you'll get to be in Wadi Rum and you can see from these photos it's like being on another planet you feel like you've left earth and you're on the moon or something. Um, this is the landscape where that Star Wars was filmed. Um, and also Dune was filmed in this landscape here. So just otherworldly and just amazing. You'll get to go on a sunrise camel ride, which is quite extraordinary. And you'll take a Jeep uh, all day and explore different areas of the desert. Um, it's such an amazing, beautiful place. And there's ancient um, art to explore in some little different canyons and crevices um, as well. You're, you'll stay in the most immaculate place. You can see here on the bottom right that there are these um, stargazing tents and they're just completely like nowhere you've ever stayed before. It's just amazing to be here. What I love about the trip in Jordan as well is that it's totally a varied trip. So you start in the you start in uh, Amman, visiting women's co-ops and Jordash, which are Roman ruins, and you start to explore. Um, eco lodges and hikes and different ecosystems and you'll go to ancient 7000 well it's not 7000 bc is like 9000 year old ruins um and this desert you finish with a snorkel on the red sea and then finally finish the trip on the dead sea so um just the most varied different diverse set of activities on this trip which i love i think that's all for that so we're going to move into the new trips phase for 2024 and i'm going to ask our panelists to uh make sure you get it a little bit more succinct because we are running out of time we have to be a little conscious of the time so we are going to move through these um obviously we're going to hit the highlights of what these new trips offer. And then obviously if there's any questions, we will make sure to get to those at the end. Okay. Hi again, guys. If anybody wasn't, uh, wasn't around for my uh, Thailand presentation earlier, my name is Jen. Um, I'm here to talk to you about two new trips that we have. Japan is a brand new destination for us. So very, very, very exciting. Um, we have two trips, uh, two separate trips in Japan. So I'll just give a quick rundown of both of them. But just to go back. So like I said, this is a brand new destination. If any of you have are fans of our Facebook page and have, uh, you know, been following us for quite some time, you'll probably know that uh, our CEO, Jennifer Haddo, she, she went there uh, last year and she, she 
designed this, she traveled and personally designed this trip, having all of you guys in mind. Um, you know, so she's been there and she experienced it and she got to meet the local guide. So, um, you know, we, we kind of feel like we, you know, we, we got this right and we're quite ready to, uh, to launch these or not to launch these trips to get these trips started. Um, like I said, there's two different trips. Uh, both of them start in April. One of them is a hiking base and the other one is a less strenuous. So um, if you're, you know, if you're not, if you're not focused on hiking or if it's not your thing, but you still always wanted to go to Japan with wild women, we do have another itinerary that is uh, we right up your alley. Um, Japan's a whole, a whole other it's a whole new world. It's a magical place. It's a whole other world. I've never, um, I have been there myself, which is, uh, you know, I, it's, I just, I, I've never seen somewhere that was so more efficient in my life <laughs> ever, ever, ever. Um, one thing that's a little bit different about these two itineraries compared to a lot of other itineraries, a lot of the transportation, uh, transportation is train travel. The train, they have their train system just mastered. It's, you know, I, I don't think anything is ever late even by a second. Um, so we do do quite a bit of train travel. I'm going to go over the pilgrimage tour. Um, just a couple of highlights. Um, first, this is a 10 days tour. It starts in Osaka and ends in Kyoto. Now we do end in Kyoto, but we will be transferring you back to Osaka because that's the closest airport. This one, as I said, it's a bit of, it's a, not a bit, it's a hiking, hiking trip. Um, over the course of the 10 days, you will collectively be walking 52 kilometer, about 52 kilometers, uh, that's, which is 31 miles. Um, all your modes of transportation, you're going to have a mix of train, bus, van, boats. Um, you'll visit a couple uh, UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Um, the first one would be the Kamano Katakan. Um, this is where you start your walk, actually, and that's from the Katara Kara to the Nachi Grand Shr uh, Shrine. So this will actually take you three days to get from start to finish, and that's about 29 kilometers or 18 miles. Your accommodations um, on this trip is going to be a mix of uh, the Royo cans, which those are traditional Japanese inns, and you'll be sleeping on tatate mats. Um, so you'll have a mix of that and then also a mix of Western style accommodations. So that would be a, a typical bed. Um, another thing you can experience on this trip is a private meditation session that's been led by a monk in Khoisan. Um, you'll have a 90 minute scenic ride down the Kumona River, and that will be on a traditional wooden flat, bread, uh, flat bottom boat. So that's pretty cool. Now you're going to have multiple opportunities to experience onsens on this site in this itinerary. There's there's going to be one almost at every um, every one of your accommodations. So after walking or hiking and trailing all those days, it'll be nice to come home to sit in a nice hot springs and um, you know relax your muscles. Um, one of the coolest things that I loved when I was there is visiting Kyoto and going to the Ge Geisha um, district. So we will be going there. We'll also be uh, very, we're going to be treated to a Geisha, a Geisha dance performance and dinner. So very, very cool. That is like when I say you're stepping into a whole new world, you're literally stepping into a whole new world. It's such a cool experience. And of course, them being women. That's what that's what we love. Um, and we do have our famous Julianne here. She most of you, if you ever talk to anybody on the phone uh, for any sales, uh, she's actually um, attending this first trip. So she's going to come back and tell us all about it. And we'll follow her along on Facebook. Um, the second trip is called Sacred Japan. So that one is that one is the one that I was talking about that is a little bit less strenuous. Um, you start and end this one in Tokyo. The means of transportation on this one, you've got pretty much one of everything, planes, trains, bus, ferries, bikes. Um, so yeah, you'll be doing a lot of different uh, different uh, transportation on this one. Um, one of the one of this what really struck me as cool that I'm glad Jennifer picked this was watching the Ama divers in action. So AMA divers, uh, divers are known as women of the sea. Basically, they're divers. They go all the way down to 25 meters, which is 82 feet, without any modern scu scuba equipment or tools. Um, they collect shellfish, uh, alibon, seaweed, pearls, um, you know, and then then they they've been doing this for over 25, 2,500 years. So this is the way of life for these women. And after you are watching them do their thing, you actually get to have tea and if time permits at lunch with either one or some of them. So you'll be able to ask them questions. They'll be able to tell you more about, um, about this, but I think it's uh, very, very cool that only women do this. Um, they wear kind of a hood and uh, that's, that's her and like goggles and that's about it. 
Um, a couple of other things in Gyo, this one will also be stopping in Kyoto. You get to visit a couple of Zen temples, uh, walk around, you know, walk around the grounds. It is gorgeous, uh, you know, uh, depending on the time of year there, just the colors, the flowers, the, uh, you know, the are just they're they're bur they're bursting it's it's probably a photographer's dream um to go there you'll visit a uh green tea um sorry traditional tea ceremony at a tea house so um the tea is tea is probably the number one drink in uh japan so you'll learn quite a bit about that you'll also uh be able to visit a green tea production uh region and then get to see the plantation and just see how that how they work in, the, in those fields there um, you'll be able to visit an onsen in on the beautiful Japan countryside. So you'll be outside in the hot springs and just looking at just at that the mountains and the greenery. It's just uh, stunning. Uh, you'll also be visiting a pottery uh, studio, and you'll get to meet a female potter. Um, we'll be visiting some temples that are over a thousand years old. Um, the last two days, we're going to take a ferry. It's about a two and a half hour ferry ride, I think, over to a volcanic island called Oki Islands. We're going to spend two days there, which is pretty cool. So one of the days we're going to be doing a four hour bike ride. And um, we're going to be visiting organic vegetable farms, sea cucumber farms. We're going to make tra uh, cra uh, traditional crafts with local women's, with women, sorry. There is e-bikes available on this day. So um, we don't, uh, if, if anybody's, uh, you know, if you're, if you're worrying about a four hour bike ride, please, please know that you're going to have a, uh, e-bikes are available if you want. Um, there will be another day where we have a three hour bike ride. Um, that one is uh, all downhill though. So that one should be fine as well. Um, we're going to round this trip off with probably one of your cool, one of the coolest experiences that I'm so excited for you guys to experience. Um, our farewell dinner back in Tokyo is going to be at a, a, a restaurant with an open kitchen and all the chefs are female. So you're going to be able to uh, uh, watch them cook, watch them uh create sushi whatever 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 they may do uh maybe they make noodles i'm not 100 percent sure but um very very cool way to round out your trip um and then we have uh jenny martindale she's not uh, a panelist today but she is a part of the wild women team my boss actually she is uh attending this trip so the very first trip in april as well so we're gonna have lots of first time experience for all you guys uh, for all you women uh, uh to to who's looking for more information on japan so please don't hesitate to give us a call Thanks, Jen. Um, yes, we have a new trip in Morocco that we're very excited about. This trip is called the Morocco Explorer, and it is nine days. So I don't know if I mentioned that other trip is 15 days. This one's nine days. And it is the best of southern Morocco. So we get to see, we get to spend some time in Marrakesh exploring. We head into the mountains and we get into the Sahara. We're going to a different part of the Sahara um, than we do on the other trip. Um, a little bit more remote, takes a little bit more time to get there. We actually have to take Jeeps across the desert to get to our camels, to get us to the accommodation in the desert. So it's a little bit more remote. Um, and we're going to follow a section of the old caravan trade route through some small Berber villages, getting a little bit more off the beaten path, um, and have some opportunity to explore some communities that are gathering argon nuts and making argon oil, which is the best hair and skin products that you will probably want to stock up on. Um, so we'll have an opportunity to see that. Um, and then we head back to Marrakesh. Both of our Morocco itineraries, um, both the 15 day one, Ultimate Explorer and um, Ultimate Morocco and Morocco Explorer, our nine day version. For both of them, we can add on an extension that heads out to the Pacific coast to uh, sorry, the Atlantic coast to Esuera, which is a beautiful small beach town, which is perfect way to unwind, eat some delicious food, maybe get a hammam, a massage, um, and be on the beach and have some downtime after these amazing experiences. So I would highly recommend that you add that onto either one of our expeditions. Hello. I get the pleasure of talking to you about our Loretto kayaking adventure. <laughs> Excuse me. As And Julianne talked to you about the um, Baja kayaking adventure, which is mainly in Espiritu Santo and La Paz. That's the kayaking there. Um, and we had an overwhelming amount of demand for that trip. And that's why we created this Loretto kayaking adventure. 
Um, it's a trip that also we're offering in October and November of this year. And um, that's a time when the gray whales are not in Baja. Uh, so we focused this trip on kayaking specifically, uh, and we expanded the kayaking trip. So we've made the kayaking trip, which is a, a supported trip, a five-day kayaking trip. Uh, and it's in a different location. It's it's in the, the provincial park around the islands in out of Loreto. Uh, so it's a little bit more of a rugged landscape, a more remote landscape. There's fewer people that you'll see along your route, um, which is which is a uh, very unique. And we also will have um, some trips on e on either end of the five day kayaking trip. So at the beginning, we'll spend a day going out to a sea lion colony and snorkeling. And after the trip, we'll end by going on a little day trip out to um, some caves and exploring some ancient prehistoric rock art. So a little bit of a unique experience there. We'll also have a cooking class, um, but the majority of this trip is focused on the kayaking. So we wanted to give you more of a robust kayaking uh, for anybody who went down on, or who has already been down on the Baja uh, kayaking trip. Such a great place to return to. You'll get to go to a different area and also expand the kayaking. So uh, you'll have four nights camping and five days kayaking, which we think is a more of a, a robust kayak and uh, experience out, out there on the land. Um, on, on my trip, my guide had a dark light, night light vision, and we, could, we ran around and ex discovered all the hidden scorpions that were hiding, which was quite a cool activity. Um, while we were camping. Um, but yeah, we love this trip and um, just an extension on our Baja program with a little bit more kayaking. Franny, would you say that um, for the kayaking trips is one better for beginner kayakers out of the two? Or are they sort of equivalent? Um, I would say that the, the one that Julianne was talking about is a little bit more beginner friendly. This one is still, you could still come if you're a beginner, but there are, there are bigger, wider crossings of open ocean and the weather tends to, um, it tends to be more windy. Um, it can still get windy in a spirit too, but, um, since the crossings are bigger, the wind has more of, of an effect on your time kayaking if it is windy. Um, so there is, there is that feature. It's a little bit more, a little bit more advanced, but you could still be a beginner intermediate and, and probably be, and be fine. Um, they are tandem kayaks. So a little bit more stable, more secure than a single kayak. Mm -hmm. And I get to talk about our new Patagonia hiking adventure, which is an amazing trip. So uh, for those of you who have seen or been on our Patagonia trip before, we did have a multi-sport trip in Patagonia. And based on our client feedback, based on your feedback, uh, we've adjusted our itinerary to make it really focused on hiking. So just as a side note, we read every piece of information, every piece of feedback that we get from you. And it really does impact the um, adjustments that we make to our trips. So we love hearing everything that you experience on your trip, uh, the friends that you made, all the times that you had. Um, but when we do get feedback around um, things that can make trips better, we're constantly adjusting and making things the best trips that they can be. So we took our client feedback and we have created a hiking adventure in Patagonia. <laughs> Um, this is the W Trek, which you may have heard of. It's an iconic trek. It's four days of the of the W Trek. Um, so we're staying in refugios, which are mountain huts along the way. So it's four days of hiking with staying two nights in the refugios. Um, and then we have some activities before and after the hike. So the W Trek is definitely the key 
uh, feature of this trip. But then beforehand, we're going to go and visit uh, Magdala Island, which is in the Strait of Magellan, and we get to see penguins. And then afterwards, we're after the hike, we're going to go to a local estancia, which is like a Chilean ranch. Um, and we'll get to see more of the cultural side. So much of Patagonia is based on the beautiful landscape, which is unbelievable and not to be missed but with all of our trips we always like to make sure that we're meeting meeting the local people that live there and getting a real sense of what it's like for you to live and be in those destinations so with our um with our estancia visit we're going to visit some gauchos and hopefully some gauchas the uh, chilean cowboys um, and then we also get an opportunity to go puma tracking which is hiking and looking for pumas mountain lions which is uh, a very, when I, when I mentioned that I got to do this, everyone said, oh, wasn't it so scary? And it's not, it's unbelievable. Um, the wild llamas are everywhere and, uh, the guanacos. And so everyone said that the pumas are not at all interested in humans because they have a buffet of guanacos. So they're not going to waste their time, uh, worrying about humans when they've got a buffet in front of them. Um, but I saw five pumas in one afternoon. It's a really amazing experience. And it's something that, um, as Patagonia is rewilding, there's a lot more wildlife in that area. So it is definitely worth seeing. Um, so yeah, I think that this Patagonia trip is, it, it's definitely uh, uh, something you wanna prepare for. Uh, it is not something to be taken light, lightly with the hiking. You wanna make sure you're getting your steps in uh, before you go, but it is an absolutely stunning, stunning adventure that you'll get to see the beautiful landscapes, meet some people, see the wildlife, and be blown away by the beauty of um, of beautiful Patagonia, Torres del Peña. Oh, and we stay in these beautiful domes. I, there's a picture, right? Uh, we stay in these beautiful eco lodge in these domes, which is right in the right in the park, and just beautiful views all around, and uh, super comfortable and unique places to stay. They're the first geodesic domes in Chile that we get to stay in. Thank you all. We're just going to move quickly to talk about the polar expeditions, the North Pole and the South Pole, and then we will answer some questions. Megan, do you want to take this away or Franny? Franny, our polar expert. Yeah, we have an amazing uh, itinerary coming up um, in November of this year. Wow, it's 2024. I can't believe it, but it's coming up. And this is my favorite itinerary. It goes to the Falkland Islands, South Georgia, and Antarctica. So Falkland Islands, um, known for wild landscapes, um, a British settlement is there, and you can see albatross um, large colonies of black browed albatross. South Georgia is the place which it has the highest amount of wildlife concentration in the world, even more than um, the Galapagos Islands, for example. They have a colony of about 600, the largest colony of king penguins, which is about 600,000 king penguins in one spot. So just really amazing. And then of course you finish in Antarctica, where you get to see Antarctic seals and icebergs abound. So limited spots and we have a 30% off sale uh, on this voyage as well. And it's in a really great, it's at a really great time of year, especially for wildlife in South Georgia. Oh, look at that. We also have some of our Arctic expeditions on for limited um, limited spots on sale. So we have a few a few spots left for our Arctic 2024 expeditions, and we have a little bit more inventory left for our 2025. Um, and we have we do have limited availability free solos for our 2025 Arctic expeditions as well. And here are some of the Arctic expeditions that we are running um, in in 2024 and 2025, Heart of the Arctic, which uh, centers around South Baffin Island and then into Cape Dorset and across to Kangaroo Swack, Greenland. Out of the Northwest Passage is in 2020, 
well, no, out of the Northwest Passage, excuse me, is in 2025 and into the Northwest Passage is this year in 2024. Uh, so taking that historic route of Franklin and get going from Greenland and up to Baffin Island, Devon Island, and exploring that Arctic Canada interior, seeing large uh, marine mammals such as polar, polar bears and perhaps Arctic whales. Um, Greenland and Arctic Canada is a trip that we're running this summer. So goes from Greenland and then up to Baffin Island and Devon Island. And Baffin Island and Greenland is a trip we're running in 2025. Greenland and Wild Labrador, we're running both 2024 and 2025. And so all of these trips are, it's hard to really dig into the nitty gritty, but we do have some webinars on on the Arctic. So if you're interested, we can send you some of those links. And of course, um, Julianne would love to talk to you about some more of the finer details. You can really um, dig into more of what you want and see which trip is a good fit for you. It's, it's hard to talk about them in such a short time, but we're happy to talk further with you. Thank you all for uh, running through all those trips. I know there's a lot, but we have a couple of questions um, that we do want to get answered um, before we wrap up for the night. Um, one of the questions um, was, are there any trips appropriate for 60 year olds? Oh my goodness, all of them, <laughs> every single one of them. We figured our, we've, we've um, done a little research into it. And I think we figured that our average age is, I mean, a wide average age is 45 to probably 85 on either ends that we have women. But uh, I think we pinpointed our average to be, if you narrow that down to be maybe 58 to 65 ish. Um, absolutely. I mean, I don't, I've, I've been on trips where I've had roommates. Uh, my first roommate actually on my first wild women trip was 82, I believe in the Galapagos and she was stronger than I was by far. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, age is very relative, but all of our trips, it really depends on what you want to do. And maybe for the more physically demanding ones, um, if you have maybe the time or you're interested in committing to maybe working up to being able to um, do that trip, say Everest base camp <laughs> would be one example where you would have to work on it a little bit more, but um, none of our trips are designed for the ultra athlete, even our Everest base camp. You just, you can work at it. If that's something you want to do, there's a, there's a way to work at it and be able to make it happen. So, yeah. Amazing. Uh, one question is, can you tell us about the typical wild woman who chooses your excursions? Um, I'll be traveling solo and am hoping for a good fit. I think you came to the right place. <laughs> um, yeah, there. We have something for everyone. I think um, the beauty of it is that if you are willing to lean in and get involved and try things and experience things and meet new people, then I think that this is these are the right trips for you. Um, and we have most of our most of our travelers are solo. So um, we do offer on trips, we offer a private upgrade if you'd like your own room, but most of our trips are matched up with a roommate. Um, so you're you're making a friend right from the get go. Um, and we definitely have a lot of a lot of women that come back to us time and again traveling with the same roommate over and over. Um, so yeah, I think um, yeah, I don't think that there's a, a best trip that would be best for a beginner or a solo traveler. I think that we all of our trips are, are ready to go if, if you're ready to, to lean into it. Yeah, and I think the only thing typical about our um, wild women guests is that they're women. <laughs> you know, we have such a wide range of personalities and uh, interests and and, you know, like we always say, the beauty of these trips is that they're they're a week long, maybe two weeks long. Um, so it's a, one of the more fun aspects of these trips is that you bring these women together from all different um, backgrounds and uh, interests. And it's, it's strangely, it works beautifully. <laughs> I, I don't understand really what it is, but it's, yeah, it's, it always works out and uh, we have a blast. So 
Awesome. We had a couple of questions about the Inca Trail, about sleeping in tents um, on the ground, in cots, on the foam pad. Is it camping? Yeah, totally. On the Inca Trail, it is camping. So you have a tent that if you choose to have a solo room, then you'll be by yourself. Or if you choose to be with a roommate, then you'll have a, a, a comrade with you in your tent. Um, they You do have therma rests. So um, you have a therma rest that the um, porters set up for you. Everything is set up for you. It's quite amazing. Your tent is set up for you. Your, um, you have a thermarest and you'll have a sleeping bag and a sleeping bag liner. And I, it's, you've, you're very tired about the end of the night and I didn't even, you just basically sleep without even noticing you're camping. It's quite amazing. <laughs> you're so exhausted by the end of the night from all that trekking. Amazing. Just looking through these comments, there's quite a few. I just, people are enjoying uh, hearing about these. Um, one question um, about the Antarctic trip, is the 30% off already taken off the price that we have posted? Yes, uh, the 30 Oh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. The 30% off the Arctic trips is noted in the price. So it's it's already been cooked into the price of the voyage that you see uh, when you look at the voyage on our website. And I think also Antarctica. I think that was, was that asking about Antarctica? Yeah. yeah. And it's for both the Arctic and the Antarctic. The discounts is reflected in the price on the website. Right. Another question. Um, does Wild Woman offer advice on how much to tip and who to tip on trips? That's a great question. So with all of our trips, we have a very robust uh, trip details tab on each of our each of our trip itineraries. And there is a section on each trip details tab that goes over tipping. Are any of the tips included in the trip? Yeah. Uh, I'll hop in here. Um, so for most of the trips, uh, I can't uh, speak for any of the, the ship trips, but for most of the trips, uh, what we generally, uh, it, it could be partner specific or destination specific, uh, specific, but what we generally like to do is have all tips included except for your your main guide and your driver. Um, now that that's not always across the board for 2024. Five, four, and five. We, um, you know that that is our goal to get as many tips uh, 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 paid up front as possible, so women aren't having to reach in their pocket or stopping at AD ATMs, and then you're getting bigger bills. So that that is definitely a hundred percent our goal, um, just to only tip the driver and the main guide because those are the ones that you're with the most, and we prefer that you you tip uh, the amount that you want versus uh, you know. A, a, a specific, a specific percentage or dollar or dollar value. And on the, on the boat trips, typically you'll have a, uh, like a shipboard account and you'll, um, when you get there, you sign in and you'll give your credit card information. And then there's a little store on board and um, any extras like drinks, special drinks um, will go onto that account. And at the end, if you, um, if you want to, they they do very specifically um, detail it on board. Um, but I think it's about fifteen dollars a day, and that goes to the fabulous. It's spread across the fabulous crew um, and staff, and you can just add that to your credit card at the end, so you don't have to worry about coming up with cash. And you, it's all um, it's at your discretion. You don't have to do it. You can lower the amount. You can higher the amount. But um, it's just a nice, easy way to deal with those tips at the end. Great. Um, so we have a couple of other questions come through, but I know we are really over time right now. So I just want to end with um, letting everyone know that we do have other webinars that we are planning. And the next one that we have right now is going to happen on February 1st with February 1st, excuse me, with Julianne. And she'll be going through our Trek to Everest Base Camp um, adventure. And we do have 
um, plans to host webinars on Jordan and our trip to Egypt as well. So look out for those in your emails. Um, when we have those dates scheduled, we will let everyone know. So um, I know we didn't get to go into too much detail into too much depth on all of these trips, but um, we do have more coming. So please stay tuned. Otherwise, we want to thank everyone tonight for attending. Um, we hope we answered all the questions that we could and any that we didn't, we will reach out via email. Otherwise, thank you and have a great night, everyone. Bye. Good night. Have a good night. Hope to talk to you soon. <laughs> <laughs>